How are you all today? Good. Before I share with you what I received from the Lord concerning President Trump, I just want to lay a preface how vitally important it is to pray for kings and for the nation. In 1995, I went to South Africa for the first time. And I was in Johannesburg. And uh, on the very first day that I was there, I was visited by a very mighty angel who identified himself as the Chief Prince Angel of South Africa. And he went on to give me some information about some of the things that had happened in the nation. It's like giving a report, you know. So, in 1994, there was a major general election in South Africa. And for the first time, the white rule that was going on for years was overthrown. And the first black president, Mandela, Nelson Mandela, was voted to become the president. So that, is, that was what happened in the nation. And the people around the world know about this. And they've been praying that something good, a good transition will take place in the nation. And this angel told me that what happened, the behind the scenes things that took place during or just before the election took place. Satan, this angel revealed to me, had planned a bloodbath in the nation so that the election will not take place. That was the plan. To keep the nation under bondage and to keep it fighting among themselves so that no progress is made. And knowing this, the Holy Spirit had alerted the Christians in South Africa to pray. And uh, the South Africans got word of this and they began to pray and it sent prayer alert news all over the world. Christians began to pray for safety of the elections in South Africa. As a result of the prayer, massive prayer that was raised up for the nation, thousands of angels were sent by God to stand all around the perimeter of the nation. And they stood shoulder to shoulder all around the borders of the nation so that not even the smallest demon could pass through them to come and cause havoc or bloodbath in the nation. As a result of this angelic protection and intervention by God, the election went smoothly through without a single drop of blood. And then the angel went on to tell me uh, some other words for the nation, for the church and all that. And uh, I narrated this to the meet in the meeting that evening. And uh, there was all these oohs and the ahs and the ohs that usually follow, you know. And after the meeting, as we were going back home to the place where I had been put, my host, a pastor, he told me a very interesting testimony. He said, whatever you shared, whatever the angel of the Lord told you is 100% correct. He said, a few months before the election, one night, a police patrolman was going around doing his night duties. And in the middle of the night, as he was doing his rounds, he was shocked to find an angel suddenly appear before him. And he was shocked by the sight of the angel. He tried to imagine, you know, it's in the thick of the night. And you're all alone patrolling and suddenly someone appears before you. How will you feel? Even if it is any angel, you will say, be gone, Satan. Right? That would be our normal reaction, you know. When you suddenly find someone full of light, 
from head to toe. So that was uh, his uh, reaction. And the angel told him, I've been sent by God to tell you to ask the Christians to pray for the election. This man was so scared, he didn't know how to react and uh, saying that the angel disappeared. So the following morning, he told this to his pastor and they all began to mobilize to pray. And the media got hurt about him and he was interviewed over radio and over television and the whole of South Africa heard the news. So Christians all over South Africa began to pray. And as a result, what I told you earlier took place. Thousands of angels came, stood all around the borders and the perimeter of South Africa so that the election went smoothly. And what this pastor also told me was the opposition party, the many tribal groups, they had actually planned a bloodbath of killing many prospective politicians so that the elections could not take place smoothly. They want to keep the nation divided. But God had a different plan. Amen. So it was the plan of God that the nation of South Africa should be set free from bondage to serve its highest destiny. Amen. So in the same manner, I'm sure you all know that God has a wonderful plan and destiny for the United States of America. Yes. Do you? Yes. And I'm sure you all will agree with me if I say that this nation hasn't entered into the fullness of her destiny yet. Amen. You agree? So that is why God has now given you a good president. A man after God's own heart. Never before in the history of the U.S. you have ever had such a president like this. At least not in a long, long, long while. I know one thing for sure, you know. Say this was... Um, before, now, before Obama, who was it? Judge Bush, right? Huh? Okay, Bush Senior, Bush Junior, right? And before them was Clinton. I think uh, either it was uh, maybe during the, the term of Bush Junior. I was invited to speak at a conference in Michigan. And during the conference, I had a vision. And I saw how some of the past presidents of the U.S. are still praying very ardently for the salvation of the United States. Among the many presidents, maybe till that time, I think it was the 40th president, till that time. Among the 40 presidents, heaven only finds four godly presidents. Four of them. Four of them really godly saints in heaven praying for the salvation of the United States. Who are the four? I don't know. Only I only saw one person, George Washington, kneeling down and praying with tears for the nation. And I saw his tears drop down and fall on the sand. And the Lord scooped the sand and has kept it, kept it in heaven. And the tear-filled sand speaks unto God, cries unto God for the salvation of this nation. In case if you are wondering how can tears pray, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 4 that the blood of Abel cried out to God. So it can, right? It has a voice to speak. On this earth, waters or wood may seem non-living thing, but not so in the heavenly realm. They all have the life of God. And they can speak just like us. So, 
now after a long time god has given this nation a respite a respite meaning a time of rest of grace in the form of president donald trump that i know beyond a shadow of doubt and i'm sure you all know that by now be an all shadow of doubt that you have been blessed with a godly i don't know whether he is holy spirit feel or not at least a born again president yes. right yes. a born again president who gives god preeminence yes. in all things he always starts his meeting with a prayer right always starts with a prayer anyway from the time that he was voted to office two years have now passed by and you all will be familiar that from the day that he took his oath till today there's always attempts been made to kick him out of office are you all aware of that you all are aware of that and as a result thousands of christians are praying for him round the clock for his safety and for his protection now on the day that i left my home nation to come here for the school that uh, we have been doing for the past 4 days so on the 13th of november just 2 hours before i was to leave to take a flight to come to the us i was just in my room minding my own business doing some other stuff when i had a visitation from a angel of the lord and this angel of the lord unlike other messenger angels who come to give a message he had a drawn sword in his hand and by the drawn sword i knew he is not just an ordinary messenger angel but he is an angel a militant angel belonging to the warrior class so they are engaged in war like the order of michael michael is not just the only angel you know for war he is the chief prince and all the angels under him they are all the warrior class and they all have the surname michael last name just like you all have last names sweet family they all have sweet last names so this angel came and he said this is what he said i have been sent to tell you to warn the christians in the us to pray for their president why he is in danger of being impeached and removed from office this has been going on for a long time but now it has heightened because of the recent november election that brought in a greater number of democrats who have vowed you know that right i don't need to tell you all that you know your own nation too well but nevertheless sometimes it's good for someone outside to come and remind us what is in store so more so than in the past now with the tilt of balance in the judiciary and in your houses of the lawmakers that he is in danger of being impeached and removed from office there are sinister forces working behind the veil on this several judges attorneys senators congressmen and even governors are working on it just to get rid of one man a whole group of lawmakers are working so that they can legally kick him out for good that he could not come back not just impeach with a warning like how they did do president bill clinton over the monica levinsky issue he was just impeach with a warning not kicked out or whereas for mr trump it's not just an impeachment is a dismissal you don't want that to happen do you 
This is not the plan of God for him to be removed. It's not the plan of God. Because God has given you four years of grace. So it should be completed. Remaining two more years, right? So the two more years, he should complete his office so that you can have the fullness of your grace. So that God's plans are not thwarted or aborted. It can be aborted, short-lived, if Christians do nothing about it. If we don't do anything about it, then the plan can be killed. In Acts chapter 12, we read that the Apostle Peter was imprisoned by King Herod to be beheaded. That was the plan. And we read that the church in Jerusalem prayed all night, chain prayer for him. As a result of the prayer, an angel was dispatched by God to go and set Peter free. This is a story in Acts chapter 12. Now you try to imagine, what if the church had not prayed? What if the church had not prayed? They were all just too busy minding their own business. They had no time to pray or they cared less to pray, thinking that some, if not me, somebody else will pray. If 1,000 people think like that, Another person will pray, another person will pray, and then nobody prays. So what would have happened to Peter? He would have been killed, right? The angel would not have been sent. So it is vitally important for the church to pray. So it is not the plan of God for him to be removed. And the final counsel was, ask the Christians in the U.S. to pray. So you must pray like never before. Because you, Mr. Trump is in the last phase of his office. Whether he is re-elected or not, that is secondary. We don't need to look at 2020 now. What's most important is to complete 18 and 19. Then we'll talk about the next term, you know. He, he too should be faithful and true. To his call so that God can extend him one more time he must also remain faithful and true if he's not faithful and true to his calling then God will God himself will remove him so you don't want that to happen too right so we want to pray very very hard amen and I want to encourage you to get this book God's answer for America a wonderful couple, Daryl and Cindy DeVille from Frisco, Texas, had this wonderful revelation from God about the United States of America. So they published this book. This retails for fifteen ninety nine. He was a special guest on our television network. And right here in this church, Pastor Sweet had interviewed him. And we televised a program on our network for several issues. And then he gave us these books so it retails for $15.99 but yours special for just $5 only $5 you can never get this from Creation House never get this anywhere for this great deal this great deal is all is for all those saints who are gathered here today for prayers Amen
John chapter 10, the text says, Your enemy kills, steals, and destroys. He kills your babies. In the womb, he kills it. He kills your children. He kills your life. He steals your blessings. He destroys your reputation. In the year 1985, I was visiting a friend of mine, a very good Muslim friend. We were very close like family. And uh, he has three daughters. So he wanted a son. In the Indian tradition, they always want a son besides daughters. Is the Ghana family like that? Same? See, I told you. I told you. Who are we? We are? Relatives. Amen. So he wanted the son. So the wife became pregnant. Every time she becomes pregnant, two or three days later, she'll have a miscarriage. She'll have heavy bleeding and she'll have a miscarriage. So this went on for a long time. Every time she becomes pregnant, she'll have heavy bleeding. But there is something else that takes place before she has this heavy bleeding. Every time she becomes pregnant, that night she will have a dream. In the dream, a witch will come to visit her. And the witch will sit in a house like this and just look at her womb. Just stare and look at the womb for a little while. And then after that, the witch will disappear. The next day, she will have bleeding. So this happens every time. Each time she conceives, the witch comes. And she will lose her baby. So this friend of mine, he told me, can you please pray for my wife and find out what is the problem? So because he's a very close friend, so I said, all right, I will do you this favor. So I fasted for three days in their house. And I prayed. On the third day, the Lord Jesus showed me where the problem was. Her own sister, oldest sister, had put witchcraft on her. Curses for the family property. Do people in Ghana do that? Yes. See? <laughs> See? You see, I told you, who are we? We are family. See, the Indian people do that, Ghana people also do that. We have the same practices and culture. Not only practice and culture, we also have the same evil heart. Amen? Same evil heart. So, for the love of property, the own sister put witchcraft, went and consulted a witch doctor and made some talisman. And when she came to visit her daughter, oh, my dear sister, she was so full of love. And she presented her gift. But that gift was that witchcraft thing to put in her house. And the Lord showed me what it was. And the Lord told me, Take that out and burn it in fire and destroy it. And the power of witchcraft will be broken. So I told my friend about this. And they searched the whole house and finally they found that thing. A product it was hidden in a secret place in their bedroom so that nobody knows. So I took it out. I went to the kitchen, prayed curse it, broke the power of the devil and burn it in fire. And then I sanctified their whole house and prayed from that day. No more witches came when she became pregnant. Set free. So, it is the power of, it's the devil who comes to kill, to steal and to destroy. It's the devil, not anybody else. the
door Hearts a drum, I want some more Eyes need mine, gotta get close We could dance, just let it flow Summer mornings feel so bright Sunshine beams in your eyes so light Every step we take feels so free You and I, we hold the key Gimme, gimme that can't sleep crush Hearts on fire, it's way too much Butterflies take over my mind Stay with me, let's rewind time Maybe hold your hand a little tight Whisper secrets in the fading light Take a chance, what could it be? This feel is electric, wild and free City lights, they paint the scene Holding hands, a teenage dream Sharing glances, feeling shy Love's a wave, we're riding high They are you, it's swirl and sway Laughter rings, we chase the gray Sparks ignite in the night air Love is magic everywhere Gimme, give gimme give that kiss, sweet crush Hearts on fire, it's way too much Butterflies take over my mind Stay with me, let's rewind time Light me, give me that cute, sweet crush Hearts on Forever young, this melody on our tongues Sunshine crushes summer dream With you by my side, it all seems real